<laughs> oh, this is horrifying. Oh my gosh. He's supposed to be unconscious. The description said his eyes were shut. How did that translate to, like, this really creepy guy with blood all over his face? I no longer have any faith in technology. What's up, my friend? Abby here, and welcome back to another episode of Writer's Life Wednesdays. Today, we're doing something a little bit special this Wednesday, and that is in honor of my new book, The Other World, which is coming out September 19th. So excited to share this book with you guys. I'm doing something super fun today, a challenge, if you will, that I think may yield some interesting results. I'm sure we all know of the recent popularity of AI-generated imagery and how this technology can be freakishly amazing and sometimes frighteningly inaccurate. When we pick up a book and read it, we of course use our imaginations to generate the scenes and the imagery that the writer is conveying in the story. Today, we're going to put technology to the test. We're going to see if AI really does have an imagination and if its imagination is more accurate or better than ours or worse. I'm literally just going to take excerpts of my actual prose from the other world copy and paste it into Midjourney and see what it comes up with. Okay, I'm gonna start with the prologue because that's where we really start to set up some imagery and some visuals in this story. In the prologue, it's from Orca's point of view and she is describing her island, her lighthouse, her bedroom, just her whole world that she lives in. And I had a really fun time writing these descriptions. So I'm really interested to see what AI is going to come up with. Um, let's take the description of the lighthouse from the prologue. But of all the sights and wonders our world has to offer, none is more familiar to me than the lighthouse. Her whitewashed tower stands proudly on the island's northern tip, crowned by a glass-walled lantern room, sea mist worshiping at her feet as she sends light across the water to infinity. It's yummy, but it encapsulates Orca's voice as well. Um, and again, I'm going to just copy and paste that. It's kind of cool, they look like they're coming out of the mist. Like the fog is clearing. Boom. Wow, okay. Wow, there's a lot of, there's a lot of rocks here. I mean, there basically is no grass <laughs> whatsoever. And I do imagine there to be like a little hill of grass that this lighthouse sits on top of. This one looks kind of abandoned. I don't think I'd want to live there. And this one appears to be just floating on a rock, like out in the water. Um, it also looks like it's abandoned. <laughs> All these lighthouses look kind of creepy. They, they look kind of like they would be in like a, a lighthouse horror novel or something. Now that one especially, I mean that one, those stairs, that, that's, that's definitely haunted. Okay, I would give this the accuracy of this um, probably a, a, a two out of 10 because it's not terrible. I mean, they are lighthouses, but they're creepy. All right, so far AI is not doing very well, so let's see if it can redeem itself with Orca's bedroom. I twirl over to the window and throw it open. Briny, sweet sea mist billows inside, fluttering the papers pinned to my walls, ocean charts and illustrations from marine biology books. Seashell garlands sway and clink jovially in the breath of a new day. I lean my elbows on the windowsill and peer across the water to the mist-shrouded islands in the distance. Okay, let's see what it can do. I'm not gonna help it out. I'm just gonna tell it hyper-realistic photograph. <laughs> Maybe this isn't fair because I'm, I mean, all of this is written in like first person tense, but hey, artificial intelligence is supposed to be more intelligent than me, so. I know it's not true. <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> what? <laughs> Let's let's try to help it out a little bit more. I'm gonna say, imagine hyper-realistic photograph of a a cottage bedroom on the coast. Briny, sweet sea mist billows inside, fluttering the papers pinned to the, to the walls. In fact, we'll take out the part about her leaning her elbows on the windowsill, just in case that windowsill is really confusing. I do realize that I never actually said we're inside of a bedroom, so let's see if we can just 
help it along a little bit. What? <laughs> this is like seashell apocalypse. <laughs> Um, this one, they didn't really get the papers pinned to the walls, more like papers that all fell off the walls. <laughs> um, but they do have the seashells. They're not really on garlands. They're just kind of stuck everywhere. Is that a... Is that a starfish or a bird? I have no idea. I like this one a lot, except it's like all of these starfish, like misshapen starfish, like climbing down the wall into her bed. It's a little unnerving. This attempt of Orca's bedroom, I would give probably a 7 out of 10 because I do love the the size of the room, the lighting, the composition, and they did get the seashells, but just a little too many seashells. <laughs> okay, let's move on to our next description, which is of Orca's sidekick, her best friend, her dog, Lucius. He is a sandy, salty mess of a dog, another outcast from the other world. Papa found him at a harbor five years ago, whimpering in a box marked free to a good home. He was the only puppy in the box, and there was no telling if he'd had any brothers and sisters taken before him. The fact remained, Lucius was all alone. Perhaps they didn't like his mismatched eyes. One was brown and one was blue, but I always thought it made him more beautiful. Papa didn't have the heart to leave him behind, so he tucked him into his raincoat and brought him to the lighthouse. He's just the right sort of dog to have at a lighthouse. A mix between some kind of collie and some kind of shepherd, according to Papa's analysis. Let's see what, <laughs> what AI comes up with for this. <laughs> that, that looks kind of scary right now. Okay, we're definitely gonna get the puppy in the box, I can see. Aww, kinda cute. <laughs> Gosh, they're all so cute. The light on this one's face, wow. Like, look at his little whiskers and everything. Okay, but like none of these really look like how I imagine Lucius to look. And none of them have mismatched eyes. What the heck? I specifically told you to make one eye blue and one eye brown. I kind of imagine Lucius to look like an Australian Shepherd collie mix. I, I would rate this one probably a six out of 10 because they did get the box and the, the cuteness. Okay, moving on to the next description in Orca's first chapter, and it's her first description of her father. The aroma of chamomile and lavender fills the kitchen as Papa strains freshly steeped tea into two ceramic mugs for us. A sickle of morning light crests the side of his face, contrasting with the scruffy salt and pepper beard that lines his jaw. Steam curls around his weathered hands as he pours the tea, his gray eyes solemn and thoughtful. Okay, let's see what happens here. Okay. <laughs> it just took the description of scruffy beard and, and thought he was Santa Claus. That's some really impressive morning light on the side of the face and great steam. Just incredible tea making aesthetic. But yeah, that, that guy is way too old. He's He's only like... 48 in the book and his beard is not that intense and his hair is definitely not that wild <laughs> i would i i would rate the accuracy of this like i don't know five out of ten because i do love the setting the setting is on point i mean the lighting the steam i love the lavender in this this actually has lavender and chamomile and like tea things that's so cool all right, let's move on to our next description that is of the greenhouse on Orca's Island. This is another description that I really loved. It was one of those moments where I just had fun playing with words and bringing this scene to life. I open the door to the greenhouse and step inside, Lucius close at my heels. A riot of color surrounds me, greens and reds and yellows and purples. Morning glories ribbon up the support poles, pressing their faces toward the ceiling in search of the sun. Beds of romaine lettuce grow in different stages of readiness. Feathery carrot tops drape from deeper beds of rich soil, and heavy vines of tomatoes cling to stakes covered with small fruit. A long trough of strawberry plants follows the wall at my eye level, red jewels dangling from tender green leaves. 
Sugar snap peas tangle playfully around everything in their reach, and the pepper plants sit stoically, watching their wild fun. Butterflies dance to and fro, fluttering from blossom to blossom and darting glimpses of yellow and orange and blue and white. It's a lot. I know, it is a lot, but I am I really wanted you to feel like you're like stepping into this world, into this greenhouse that honestly, I, I wish I had this greenhouse in, in real life. Wow, I am shocked. It actually got the lettuce. Wow. Got the lettuce. I, I don't see the carrots um, or the strawberries. I see lots of plants. Lots of different colors. That's good. The riot of color is is good. And I like the little pavers in here. That's kind of cute. This is pretty good. I would give this, I would give this a nine out of 10. Okay, moving on. This is the scene where she finds Adam's backpack washed up on the beach and she's kind of digging through the stuff in the backpack and she finds Adam's wallet. And in the wallet, there's a photograph of him and Jack. Tucked inside the wallet is a color photograph of two young men standing in front of a float plane, grinning in the sunlight. They're nearly the same height, but not the same age. One looks distinctly older, Adam. I recognize his face from the photo ID, though he looks much happier in this picture. The sunlight catches in his dark brown hair and highlights the shadow of stubble on his sharp jaw. He's wearing a bomber jacket with sunglasses clipped to the collar, and he has one arm slung over the other boy's shoulder, as if to show off the imperceptible height difference between them. There's a wild excitement in the younger one's eyes, like he either just had the most thrilling experience of his life, or he's about to. The sunlight makes artwork of him too, etching the lines of his jaw, shoulders, and forearms. I have a feeling they're not gonna look anything like how I imagined Adam and Jack to look. Okay, okay. Wow, okay, that is, that is not bad. That is not as bad as I was thinking it would be. Okay, so if I had to pick one, that they, they definitely look too young here. I mean, I don't know which one's supposed to be Jack and which one's supposed to be Adam. This one, I just can't get over the plane. What kind of plane is that? Probably my favorite one is is the first one in the upper left. I would, I would rate this one six out of 10. I'll be generous. Back to Jack's point of view, let's look at another description of a setting, and that is his and Adam's room. Jack is sort of looking at his side of the room for the first time because he's realizing what a mess it is and how he feels bad that Adam has to live with it. Poor Adam always kept his side of the room so ship shape, but had to look at mine, which is almost as much of a wreck as I feel. I see clothes I keep forgetting to put away, my backpack slumped beside my bed, books spilling out to join the VHS tapes and video games on the floor, most of which are in the wrong cases. My sneakers kicked far away from each other, my aviator shades ready to fall off the edge of the dresser, and my bomber jacket left on my unmade bed. I have a feeling they're just gonna make a room that looks incredibly messy and probably only has one bed in it. Mess is coming through the fog. <laughs> wow. Wow, that, that, okay. Okay, he's not that bad. He's not that messy. I, I don't think Jack's mother would allow this. I'm gonna rate this one two out of 10. Okay, last but not least, we're gonna take one more description from Orca's point of view, about 83 pages into the book, when she first stumbles across Adam, or Adam stumbles across her. He shows up at her lighthouse and she opens the door to find him collapsed on the doorstep. He's unconscious. She has to nurse him back to health. It's their meet cute, but he's actually unconscious for the first part of it. Now in the lamplight, I can make out his face. It is a tattered replica of the striking man in the photo, but his most distinctive features are unchanged. His eyebrows, his nose, the sharp line of his jaw, which is now covered in stubble and smudged with dirt and blood. A painful looking scratch runs down his cheek from the outside corner of his eye, like a fallen tear scarring his face. He's still unconscious, eyes shut, shallow breaths, short dark hair a mess. The waning fire casts honey-colored light across his unshaven face, the sharp line of his cheekbones, the smooth skin of his neck. Even in such a state, Adam Stevenson is a thing of beauty. Okay, so we're gonna take both those descriptions and put them together in hopes that Midjourney will be able to render a better, more accurate image of Adam. Oh my gosh, this is scary looking. Wait, one of them is like a, a mugshot that looks like it's from a Western? 
<laughs> oh, this is horrifying. Oh my gosh. I no longer have any faith in technology. No, God, please, no, no! This gets a zero out of 10 for me. Zero out of 10. This guy could definitely fit with those first images of the haunted lighthouse, but it's definitely not Adam. I mean, come on. Maybe we just need to shorten this description a little bit and give it a little bit more help. So let's see, imagine hyper-realistic photo of a young man lying unconscious on a living room floor. Okay, we don't want headshots. Come on, he's supposed to be unconscious. The description said his eyes were shut. How does that translate to like this really creepy guy with blood all over his face? Well, okay, I see fire, definitely see fire. It looks a little bit hazardous. <laughs> it looks so painful. He's literally lying in the fire, <laughs> lying on this bed of hot coals. Oh my gosh, that is painful to look at. <laughs> this one, he's like almost touching it. Like, should I lie down in the in the bed of hot coals or not? I don't know, I'm unconscious. Also, how does an unconscious guy keep his head lifted that high? I would give this one a four out of 10 because it's ridiculous to have him lying in the fire, but he's, he's definitely attractive enough and he has the look of Adam Stevenson about him. So the, the, the description of his face was well executed, but man, that's just painful to look at. <laughs> okay, boom, what's the verdict? The verdict is that I no longer have much faith in artificial intelligence. Nothing beats the human imagination, but it was interesting to see what Midjourney came up with and how they interpreted my writing, both in good ways and incredibly scary ways. I know it's all fun and games, but it can be actually an interesting exercise to see how your prose translates into imagery, both through the human imagination and through the programming of artificial intelligence. I challenge you to try this with your own writing. Copy and paste some of your descriptions into Midjourney or a similar AI image generating software and see what happens, see what it comes up with. See if your descriptions are accurate enough and clear enough that even a computer can understand them or does it take a little bit more brain power than that? I hope you enjoyed this sneak peek at some of my favorite excerpts from my new book, The Other World. It comes out September 19th, but you can now pre-order this book. And when you pre-order The Other World before September 19th, you will get access to some exclusive bonus content and you can unlock that bonus content by clicking the link below this video. So if you pre-order, make sure you also check out that other link that says unlock your bonus content and you'll get exclusive access to the first five chapters of this book so you can actually start reading it immediately. You don't have to wait for September 19th when you pre-order this book, plus a bunch of other really fun exclusive bonus content. So go order your copy right now. All the links are in the description box below this video. And I hope when you read it, your brilliant, beautiful imagination will conjure some amazing scenes and imagery even better than what we've seen today. Comment below and tell me what was your favorite AI generated image from this video. My favorite was probably the greenhouse, even though it wasn't exactly how I imagined the greenhouse to look. It does have that really magical, whimsical vibe and I would totally want that greenhouse. I mean, if somebody gave me that greenhouse, I would love it to pieces. Smash that like button if you liked this video and be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already because I post writing videos every week and I would love to have you here in the community. Now go pre-order your copy of The Other World. Until next time, my friend, rock on. Shh.